listening to it all over again and rediscovering a little feeling about it or yeah i mean i'll definitely i i listen to so much random stuff that people would probably not assume you know like i of course like you know i came up in like fresno which had like a huge hardcore community but i love the like you know reggae and ska and so i'll sometimes turn that on and i come from a family of people who are really into like old country and like folk music and so that comes on sometimes and you know that's where like the singing and the harmonies come from and all that stuff and um and then you know also like the opposite side of that like the studying stuff is more the jazz you know soulful r&b stuff but then of course like if, if somebody walks anywhere near where i live they can hear me blasting so it's super <laughs> strange in the middle of the day absolutely yeah, that, that's pretty cool. I, I got to commend you for that because it's great to kind of keep your I, I hate when I when when people try to pigeonhole and say, so, you know, what's your style? Like, I, I huh. don't I hate that. I hate. Um, no. Or the way I uh, preface the question. So your influences, you know, well, what isn't an influence? I'm, that's the thing, right? It's like yeah, that's, it's such a tough question for me to answer. Like when people bring that up, I don't love it. Right. I mean, because it's always different from the from like day to day of like, oh, today I'm feeling like my teenage self, you know what I mean? Or to, you know, like, want to do a throwback kind of thing, <laughs> just revisit that, like, um, that internal sensation of like, why you like music and where, you know, where that all came from. And, you know, whereas the next day I'll be like super nerdy and like, I want to talk about all my influences and, you know, <laughs> study, but, but yeah, it's, it, it doesn't make the musician who they are, right? It's all of it. Yeah. All, yeah, exactly. Because of, of eventually, and as a bass player would have it, that, you know, you have to be able to work with everybody. I mean, you have to, yeah. you've got to fit in with not just the drummer, but the vocalist. You can't step on that. You can't be, yeah. you know. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, I've learned that several <laughs> ways, but <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you referring to as far as like playing wise, like the bass itself? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Finding but it's all, but all of that together, you know, is what music is, right? That's how we come together. Yeah, and um, of course, my friend always say to me, uh, he says this like every day, leaving the space, right? Like, we, music is like sound and occupying space, but it's also just as important as like the open space, which, you know, applies to um, everything. Gigging too much, you know. Um, yeah. Right taking a riff while the vocalist is trying to take a riff, you know, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I just need you guys to know that Taco is here. Oh, there's Taco. Mighty, look over here. Look, we've got Taco. You want to see Taco? Oh, he's too... <laughs> <laughs> he's so good. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that's the guy. But, yeah. Um, yeah, and then also uh, that applies to performing, I think, too, just like – you know, do you walk out in front of the singer on the thrust or do you not? <laughs> that depends on your environment. Yeah, you kind of have to, right. And so your your steady gig has been uh, Panic at the Disco as of yeah. what it's been a few years now, right? A couple yes. years? I'm like, I want to say four. I want to. I'm clearly not keeping track the right way, but because um, the pandemic really confused me. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? It really did. We lost a year, so. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's that's the gig, and I hope that stays the gig forever. I love I love those guys. Um, I mean, it's so dynamic. It's like that must have just been like when you got the call for that. I mean, you were already doing pretty good career wise. You weren't doing too bad. Uh, yeah, things were growing in a weird way that I wasn't expecting for sure at that point. Um, you know, in a weird direction. I didn't expect to be a touring musician at all, but. Um, yeah, that that was an interesting thing when I got the call because I hadn't really like listened to Panic since since I was really young, you know. Um, and I was at the laundromat, I think, when I like got on the phone with management. I was like just hanging out, like yeah, sure, like you know, outside in the street. <laughs> and uh, it didn't really like hit me. I like, I went home and I was talking to my friend, and and she was like, "Wait, did you say Panic at the Disco?" Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, we'll see what happens. And she was like, okay, um, you you remember who that is, right? And she was just, like blown away that I wasn't melting. Like my brain wasn't exploding. But it hit me when I got to Brenton's house and I was like, oh, 
this is for real. This, is, this could be really, really cool. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> really miss that. But yeah, because you know, I feel like in, in this world, you get calls all the time and things fall through and you know, you never let yourself get too excited um, about anything because it's just always moving, constantly changing and you know, um, so I, I guess that's just kind of where my head is at when I get the call, but um, I am very grateful. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, how could you yeah. not be in that? I just imagine like getting that call and then immediately like hitting the road. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, God, how long was it? Was it was, yeah, yeah, because they they had um, their bassist had left um, right before their tour was supposed to start. We did the underplay tour, which was probably my favorite one of all. But um, that was where we just did these like tiny little clubs, you know, like something you do here in Hollywood. And, um, people, I, I think they weren't announcing the location until hours before. So oh, people wow. would just come rushing these places and like try to get in line and only so many people would get in. And it was just such an energetic experience, you know, it's really cool. Amazing. And so the, the whole catalog, you, ha you got it down. <laughs> well, I didn't have to learn. I mean, there's no way I learned everything, right? But um, <laughs> You know, we, we play for like two hours. That's our set. So it's it's long. It's real long. And there's, you know, like modifications on the songs. You know, there's key changes. There's um, we go into like these unique sections or hits that we don't do on the record and, you know, stuff like that. So it was uh, it was fun. And rehearsals were super fun. So wow. special. Yeah. So um, I. I... I was going to ask you too. I, I was just kind of curious, and a lot of people keep at, see the questions that keep popping up. When's the next tour? What's going on? When you? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> um, I mean, you heard it, folks. <laughs> I think what everybody kind of doesn't fully understand is that um, the everybody's like, why why aren't you guys out? There's other bands out. You know, it's because there's there was like a back order on tours, you know, and like COVID hit, right. and everybody who had stuff booked you know, like they weren't able to go, but they were still like holding that stuff and holding all the equipment, holding all the, you know, the team, like all the people that you need for it. You can't just like, they don't just show up. You have to like, you know, get those people ready and all the trucks, everything like that. Um, so all of that is happening now. Like all the stuff that was supposed to happen is happening now. So there's not really availability to just right. jump on a tour. You know, it doesn't just work like that. So um, there's just a little bit of like a, we all kind of have to wait a little bit. Because <laughs> yeah, when you're ready, ready to go, go, you're ready to yeah. go. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's not like it's going to be, there won't be enough one. I mean, there will be, there will be lots more. It's just not, you know, right now. Yeah. Yeah. So. And for yourself, um, have you, because you work on your own projects as well, you've got some things in the works there? Yeah, yeah. So I started writing, um, other than just being like, you know, the session person playing other people's music, I accidentally started writing during COVID and that's not really, um, I'm not, I'm not a tech guy. Like I'm not tech savvy. I had to learn how to use logic. It's not my thing. I'm mostly just a like, you know, little basic, basic kid, but, um, you know, with some help, I learned it all and, um, uh, wrote my first song, which was Headspace and put that out. And since then I've been, since everything reopened, I've been slacking, but I am working on stuff <laughs> and, um, going to be working with uh, a producer friend of mine who's going to be helping me, you know, get some stuff together and get it like actually moving. He's, he said to me the other night, he's like, Nicole, he was like, the bass thing is cool, but every minute that you're not doing this stuff, you're wasting your time. <laughs> well, so. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I was glad to hear it because I, I heard your song and I was like, <laughs> that's why I asked the question because it just, um, I don't know what direction you would go with whatever you're working on, let that be a surprise, but you know. Well, I mean, that sound that you heard is definitely um, my vibe. You know, I love that stuff. Uh, and, you know, the, what was it crickets in that song? Cricket sounds, every, like, yeah. this other stuff I'm, I'm using also has strange sounds in it, like kind of underlaid in there. So I feel like that's just gonna be part of it, but. Um, the thing I've been receiving from people is that they want vocals on it. You know, they want um, singing. And I'm not sure why. I, I mean, I, I get that, like, that's just the standard of music, right? People like lyrics and people like vocals. Sure, but, sure. Um, 
that would be new to me. So I will be doing that. It's just, I think that would be like the, the unique thing that would change about the music. But the vibe overall is probably still going to be that thing. Well, you know, I, yeah, yeah I, I really liked it. And I have to make the comment that I especially just love the tones that you, you, you do when you play bass. It's just, it like, there's that melodic thing. But there, I, I don't know how best to describe it. It, it is your tone. Yeah. Like I've heard you play different things, but I hear you, you know. It's that, you know, it's, well, it's not the bass. I, obviously, it's the way you play it. But that jazz bass, um, that four string Marcus Miller jazz bass has always been, it's the one I've been using forever. And it has this like unique, gorgeous tone um, that I've been unable to get from anything else. Yeah, and amazing. that's the bass that I will use for everything. Um, awesome for to hear. Yeah. I know. It was at NAMM a couple of years ago. I was with a bass friend of mine and we were walking and we go down the aisles and he's looking and he saw all these basses that were like four, eight strings where he's like, not that aisle. No. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it, yeah, yeah. Some people are purists. Right. Um, I have been cheating on the purist concept lately with my five strings, but um, that's just because of a genre thing. That's been yeah, I mean, there's yeah. specific needs for it. You know, you, you have yeah. to be real about it. Yes. That. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that. Um, <laughs> yeah. My, my face is getting refretted right now. Otherwise, I'd pull it up here and show you. Uh, well, one last thing on the base is that on mine here, I refretted it to put flat wounds on it. Yeah. Um, and I apparently bought the short neck strings. So. Oh, yeah. You got a short scale string. Have you ever done that? Like just bought the wrong strings? <laughs> uh, I've, I've only done it when